Hey guys, this isn't the first amplifier board I've shown you on the channel, but it's definitely the best so far. It is made specifically for people who want to make their own DIY wireless speaker. On top of Bluetooth it has Wi-Fi, it works with streaming services like Spotify and Tidal, it can be used as a USB DAC, and it has its own amplifier that puts out 50 watts per channel. I have been using it for some time and I want to tell you more about it, but first a disclaimer. This amplifier board was sent to me for absolutely free by Arilic, the company who makes it. In exchange I promised to feature it on my channel. I was very clear that I would state my honest opinion about the product, and they were okay with that. With that out of the way, let's look at the board itself. It measures 8 by 11 cm and it's about 2 cm tall. There are 4 mounting holes in the corners. I noticed that a capacitor is very close to one of them, but it is not too close for a screw to fit. Speaking of screws, the heatsink is screwed onto the amplifier chip, it's not just glued there, so you know it's not coming off on its own. I like this. On the back of the board we see the power button, a network connector, a full-size USB port, an analog input jack and a micro USB connector. Next to them are the stereo speaker outputs and the power input. On the front we have a status LED and an infrared receiver for a remote control. Now in case you want to put this board inside an enclosure, you can add an external remote control receiver. In fact, there are many input and output modules that you can buy and use with this board. For example, you can add playback control buttons or volume control. You can even make your own, if you feel like it. I think that's pretty neat. These two antennas are for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You can peel the back off and stick them to a flat surface, like the inside of an enclosure. Here I have the massive power adapter that Arilic sells specifically for its products. I also got instructions in the box with fairly easy to follow setup steps. Ok, now let's power up this board and see what it can do. The first time you turn it on, the board will go into Wi-Fi mode and it's actually going to show up as a Wi-Fi network on your phone. But do not connect to it yet, you first have to download an app called Forstream. Then you connect to the board over Wi-Fi to set it up. When you connect, you have two options. With a direct connection, you can play music you have saved on your phone, like MP3 or FLAC audio files. You can also browse the contents of a flash drive if you have one connected. And you don't need a Wi-Fi router for any of this. But if you choose connect, you can connect the board to your Wi-Fi network, so that it can access the internet. This is what you do if you want to play music from services like Spotify. Once that's done, the Arilic board will appear in the devices list in Spotify and you can have it play your music. The Wi-Fi range of the board is comparable to that of a cell phone. If you are in a room and you're getting Wi-Fi on your phone, chances are this board will also be able to connect. However, for some features, a strong connection is pretty much mandatory. For example, if you're playing FLAC files from your phone, you need to have a good or excellent signal strength, otherwise the music may get choppy. You can switch to Bluetooth mode from the app or using the remote control if you have it. I don't need to go into details here, you've probably used a Bluetooth speaker before. I'm happy to report that the board has very good Bluetooth range and picks up the signal even if my phone is in a different room. If you connect the board to a computer with a micro USB cable, it will get detected as an audio device. You can use this feature to play music from your PC without worrying about signal strength or losing quality. Alternatively, you can use a 3.5mm audio cable to connect an audio device like an iPad or a music player. The USB port works with external drives. I tried it with two USB sticks that I have, one is 8GB, the other one is 32GB 
and both work fine. However, the board could not detect my 4TB external hard drive, although I am guessing that's because of the NTFS file system. One thing I was concerned about was the size of the heatsink. The board is expected to provide up to 50 watts per channel and a heatsink this small did not seem adequate. But it turns out it's good enough. I ran a sine wave at maximum volume for more than 5 minutes and the heatsink was barely warm to the touch. A few words about the Forstream app. I think it needs some work, for example it would be nice to have a widget or some kind of quick controls in the notification tray like Spotify has. It also gets glitchy from time to time, like it won't detect the board from the first try. Overall it gets the job done, but judging by the reviews online, I'm not the only one who's had issues with it. So in conclusion, if you want to make a more advanced DIY speaker, I think you should consider a Relix amplifier boards. They have different models for different needs, from simple wireless receivers to complete 2.1 amplifier boards. And if you want something more user-friendly, check out the fully assembled wireless amplifiers. I'll put links in the description. Thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel to never miss any of my future videos.